Oh, greetings, I'm back with another video and uh, yeah, once again it's been a while since I've put a video out and so I'm a bit rusty, uh, forgive me, it gets a little bit um, rough in the beginning but we'll get into it pretty much soon enough. As, you, as you've seen by the title, this video is going to be about Daniel's 70 weeks <coughs> prophecy in Daniel 9 uh, verses uh, 24 to 27. By my book, this is probably the most important prophecy in the Bible. I'm not saying that the others aren't important, but this one in particular uh, really stands out in terms of its importance for us to understand a number of things. And I, I'm so I'm going to try and uh, do honor to the to the prophecy, um, do honor to the Lord and to Daniel, to whom the prophecy was given. Unfortunately, this is also probably the, the most misunderstood prophecy, um, the, the most incorrectly interpreted uh, prophecy uh, in the Bible. And um, I hope to be able to straighten out a couple of things with this video. Some of the things are going to be vastly different to what the churches typically teach with regards to the understanding of Daniel's 70 weeks. Uh, the most common teaching amongst the church is that Daniel's 69, first 69 weeks have been fulfilled up to the first advent of Christ and that there remains the 70th week which will be a, a seven year tribulation uh, at the end uh, after a 2000 year break. So I'm going to boldly say to you that that is completely and utterly a wrong interpretation. It is the, the is, it's just completely wrong and I, and I hope to be able to leave you with a clear understanding as to why I say that it's completely wrong and it's and it's uh, and it's a, an incorrect teaching. And it's also caused a lot of um, misunderstanding of these of what actually is going to happen in the last days during the tribulation. So what I what I plan to also do, well, what what I want to do here in this video, is I'm going to cover a few things. Um, the first thing I'm going to lead you to understand uh, exactly how the uh, the 490 years or the 70 weeks, 70 weeks of years uh, were were fulfilled incomplete. Uh, by the time that um, Jesus was crucified or shortly after that he was crucified that that entire prophecy was completed uh, from the perspective of thy people so there are two perspectives that we need to have a look at in this prophecy and this is what I want to show you there's a perspective in terms of the people and there's a perspective in terms of the holy city I am yet to find anybody or I, I haven't yet found anybody that can clearly tell me why uh, the temple, the second temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. And I hope to be able to show you tonight the truth of why the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Some people have come up with a 40 year account from, from the crucifixion of Jesus, uh, which is not entirely correct it's not 40 years it's short of 40 years from when he was crucified the only the only way they can get 40 years is if they make move the crucifixion to an earlier date around um, 30 AD which is incorrect uh, but there's a there's a perfectly there's a scriptural uh, explanation for it so I want to get into that uh, I want to get into the understanding of what who the real trigger was and what was the real trigger the trigger was the command uh, to restore and build Jerusalem and there's been a tremendous amount of debate uh, from and various teachings on who this trigger is uh, uh, using Darius Artax Sirius oh there's a, there's a whole lot of possibilities that have been presented um, very few have presented the possibility that it was in fact Cyrus and I'm going to show you in this video that it was Cyrus's decree that was the trigger for the 70 weeks of Daniel.
and I'll explain to you why it is that they've rejected Cyrus's um, decree. Uh, so that's, um, that's something that I want to leave you with a clear understanding on. Okay, so we're going to be looking at this thing entirely on biblical principles and using only biblical scripture to prove my point. Um, the only time that I will refer to an historic event is because the Bible specifically refers to um, a, a historical event. I'm also going to cover exactly why we understand why we know that um, Jesus was baptized around 2980 and we also uh, why it is that 29 stroke 3080 was a jubilee year. So those are the key things that I want to get into. Um, I'm going to move away from this chart for a bit and then I'm going to come back to uh, to, to it and recap um, using using the chart. So before before I can get into uh, you know to explain uh, these various aspects I need to get into some detail. The basis is the biblical chronology, um, and I need so I just want to cover uh, uh, w what I mean. I just need to, uh, I need everybody to be on the same page as to what I mean by biblical chronology because there are many chronologies out there and many ideas, but there's only one chronology that is entirely based on the Bible, no other source was used to, to, to determine the sequence and the timing of the chronological events only the biblical chronological so all the various biblical uh, chronological statements were pieced together painstakingly by a number of people most of them got it wrong but there was one guy that got it pretty much figured out some of the pieces were put in the wrong place by, pre by his predecessors but a, a guy by the name of Reverend Martin Anstey in uh, 19... 13 published his book called the romance of biblical romance of bible chronology and um, in this book he describes the detail of how he determined from the scriptures the the the, the chronological record that is in it so he painstakingly pieced every single chronological statement as a puzzle piece and built the puzzle piece by piece making absolutely sure that he got the right piece in the right place okay this is a PDF copy, freely available. It's public domain uh, uh, literature. Uh, it, I'll, make, I'll make links available in the description box to this. Uh, so that, that is available to us. I, uh, I have done a video, in fact I've done four videos uh, describing this biblical chronology. It, I couldn't get it all done in, 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 one, uh, in one setting. So um, there's, on my on my channel Ivan S128 you'll find that there's um, it's in a playlist as well but it's these four uh, public uh, these four videos here this one and these these three are making a group of four which goes into the detail of of the biblical chronology there's a summary version um, 6,000 years of biblical chronology uh, very much it also touches on some of the subject that I'm touching on in this video but uh, in this video I'm going to go into some more detail that I hadn't picked up um, at the time that I did this a year ago um, another interesting one that's related to it um, is where we are in the Jubilee cycle I'm going to touch on that in this video in this teaching but this is a detailed version of showing exactly from scripture and the chronology where we are in the Jubilee cycle which is the the Shemitah cycle? You know the the uh, the seven years where Israel uh, um, could farm for six years, and the seventh year was rest, um, which was the, the the rules and the laws by which they they are uh, they are supposed to use the land that belongs to him. All right. So God has a cycle. He has a fixed cycle, and it's still in ex in existence, and the problem is that we've lost sight of where we are in that cycle. The Jews believe that they understand where they, where we are in the cycle. I believe that they are wrong based on scripture. And this is the, the video we are going to detail as to how I know where we are in the biblical cycle. Okay. Um, so what I've, what I've did was when, when from, from, 
Martin Anstey's book is it's two parts. Volume one is the detail, and uh, volume two is 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 a uh, is are all his tables. So he put his uh, the chronology from the explanation. He's not he tabled it starting off in the beginning of the when uh, let me just get to the beginning of the table. Uh, so we've got from Adam from N Hom one forward um, through the years where with with references uh, from the scriptures biblical um, uh, scriptural references he's also put that against um, uh, the Potomac dates now most uh, biblical scholars refer to a chronology that is based on Ptolemy's dates Ptolemy uh, put a, a, a canon together describing the the uh, the kings of Persia, that time period, uh, from from Cyrus through to Alexander the Great, there was very little history available. A number of people tried to put lists together. Ptolemy put one together, and the world uh, at large has adopted um, Ptolemy's um, canon on on that uh, on on the kings of Persia, which which was you know to cover that time period. Unfortunately, Ptolemy was was he has a 82-year error in his um, in his canon, and that 82-year error is, is is what caused tremendous grief and confusion in determining determining Daniel's um, 70 weeks because they put Cyrus uh, the the rule of Cyrus when he started his rule uh, at the wrong date. And when you do that, you, you the numbers just don't hang together. So then there has to be a whole lot of manipulation. And boy, has there been manipulation. Anything from choosing different uh, uh, commands, uh, later commands or later uh, um, letters that were really just reinforcing Cyrus's original command as the trigger. Uh, ideas of using 360-day years and manipulating the, the count to fit uh, to get to a date somewhere where they believe it should be uh, somewhere around 28 to 30 AD um, and a whole various uh, uh, combinations of that more recently I actually watched a video on a guy uh, where he, he acknowledges that Cyrus's decree was the trigger of course he, he sees that Cyrus uh, was you know the date referred to is uh, it's, it's, it's around 536 BC. So 536, and you're sitting with 490 years. You don't even come close to uh, the date that they that we, that we know that Jesus was here. So what he did was he uses the Cyrus date, uh, and he then switches the the 49 years uh, the the you know the the seven weeks and the 62 weeks around so the 62 weeks comes first and then the seven weeks which is you know completely unscriptural uh, a count of 62 times seven which is 434 years from cyrus and then he picks a date he believes that jesus uh, was crucified in 30 a.d and then he counts the 49 years backwards uh, to another date and he justifies those dates and then he sits with this gap uh, between the two dates which for some other reason is just there um, it's unexplainable um, so that was I think probably the strangest uh, explanation that I've yet seen the important thing is what is the truth and um, if you're watching this video and if you're still with me well then I'll classify as one of the very, very, very few people that are really after the truth, seeking out the truth, that really want to know the truth. And it always, whenever I speak about the truth, it reminds me of, of the Lord's parable on the talents, where the one servant was given five, and the other servant was given two, and the other servant was given one, and the, the one servant uses the five to gain five more and the 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 the, the, the wicked servant buries the the very one uh, uh, talent that he was given and the lord praises the 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 servant for 
being wise and enters into his his kingdom, and the other one is is banished for being uh, a lawful uh, servant. The interpretation of that uh, parable is clearly uh, given to us in in Matthew, where the Lord says, "To those that have knowledge, more, not more will be given, and to those who don't." even the little which they have will be taken away from them, which fits the parable completely when explained the parable as well. So um, the talents are truths, knowledge and understanding. And those that use what they've got to gain more are good and wise servants. It's it's like the, the ten virgins. Uh, five, uh, the oil in the lamps is often ascribed as being the Holy Spirit. It's nonsense. You cannot buy the Holy Spirit is the ten five virgins that didn't have enough oil are told to go and buy more oil. I'm sorry, you just cannot buy the Holy Spirit. That's not the correct interpretation. The interpretation is oil is knowledge and understanding. It takes time and effort to acquire knowledge and understanding. And uh, five virgins had knowledge and understanding. They were wise, and the other five didn't have uh, knowledge and understanding, and they were foolish. So that's why I say. You know, my channel is, is a tiny channel and I'm sharing information uh, for, to, for a very, very, very small group. If you take, if you consider that we've had a biblical chronology complete from the Bible for 110 years and the bulk of the church, the majority, everybody, I, I think there's literally maybe, well, there's less than 100 people, I think, that actually are aware of the, uh, the Martin Anstey's work. And... Uh, so it's, it's, it's really a small group that I'm speaking to. Um, it's really a small group that are really seeking after the truth. And you know, there's many teaching, many guys teaching on these things, and it's great works. I mean, they, they're really teaching f with all good intention. We just need to remember that all works will be tested by fire. And if your works withstand the fire, it, then you have gained. If you if, they, if your works cannot withstand the fire, you 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 will stand to lose. Not your salvation, but a, a a reward. So we need to be much more. We need to be very very careful. Um, particularly those that teach, and um, to make sure that our works are built on the solid word, and on scripture. If it's not based on scripture, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna uh, that it's gonna be burnt up when it comes to the test. So I don't want to belabor that point, but yeah, if you're still with me, great. We're going to press on. Uh, so this was, yeah, this was uh, Martin's tables and uh, they were, it was obviously a hard copy. It's difficult to work with. So what I did some years ago is I imported this into an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And this is what it looks like now. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview. We're not going to go through in detail on the whole uh, chronology, but just uh, uh, what I did was I split up chronology over a, over a few thousand years per tab. So we've got these tabs with the, with the thousands of years grouped in each of them. And then I've, I've got some of, uh, well, all of uh, um, Martin's original headings, but I've added a lot of columns to it. Um, uh, I've added columns of counts, for example, uh, for the 490 years. I've added columns for the Jubilee count, the Shemitah year counts. I've added the Gregorian uh, dates, which, uh, in other words, the, the, the corresponding Gregorian, true Gre Gregorian date. So you've got a Ptolemy Gregorian date, the Ptolemy gate date. So for Cyrus's first year, uh, the most would teach that he was um, that either referred to uh, 538, which was not his um, first year. That was his co. He was co-ruler with Darius the Mede. Darius the Mede was uh, governor for two years. Cyrus was co-ruling. He wasn't sole king. He only became sole king after those two years. So some people still see Cyrus as in, at the 538 mark. So others have quoted different numbers. Some have quoted the 536. That's based on the Ptolemic uh, canon, which has got the 82-year year error in it. So, the, But the true Gregorian date, 
for Cyrus's first year of rule, where he became sole king, is actually the year 454 BC, which was the year 3589 Adam. So, in other words, since uh, Adam, from Adam to Cyrus was 3589. Okay. Some of these other numbers, we'll, we'll, we'll get into them. But this was when the decree to rebuild was issued in Cyrus's first year. Not when he was co-ruler with uh, uh, Darius the Mede. He, this was, it was issued in, in his first year. So it would have been in that year. So now you can see that 454 is less than 493. So now we don't have that problem of trying to find uh, an alternative uh, command to restore uh, and rebuild Jerusalem. Cyrus uh, was was the one, and he was he was named by the Lord 150 years before he was born. Ezra 1 1 is one of those. It's in several places. Um, maybe let's just go there because I think it's important to actually see. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It is. Yeah. Now. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, so in his first year as king, as his his first year as king of per, um, king of Persia, that the word um, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, that the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, uh, king of Persia, that he made that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and. And put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus the king of Persia, the Lord of God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And and so he did. Um, and that was the one record of the decree. There are others as well. Um, there was a verse... There it is, yeah. Isaiah forty four twenty-eight. Um so it starts off here in twenty four, thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee out of the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. Okay, and that goes on to list a whole lot of things that frustrateth uh, the tokens of the liars, that confirmeth the word of his servant that saith to the deep be dry, etc. And then it ends in that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shall be built and the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. So, Isaiah, uh, uh, Cyrus was, uh, was prophesied about, this would have been about 150 years before Cyrus was actually born. So in my book, there is no doubt at all, from a scriptural perspective, Cyrus's decree is the trigger. All the others were just affirmations later on because of resistance. Uh, but they always went back, all of them always went back to the records and saw that Cyrus was, uh, did in fact decree the building of Jerusalem in the temple. So when you got the correct biblical chronology, all these difficulties go away, and you can, and you don't have to start bending scripture, or breaking it in, in some by some uh, in some instances. This is the chronology that was that, that would have been used that I used to understand. So this, if we if we uh, what we did there was then the the the, sev the end of the seventy years of captivity. This is the seventy years that Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach, from the beginning of their captivity which is biblically pegged to a certain date. In this instance, I think it was uh, to the third year of Jehoiakim. The date, the beginning is clearly pegged uh, against the chronology. Uh, I covered that all in detail in my previous videos. And so we can count off 70 years. Um, and in fact, 
the prophecy was given to Daniel two years before. Um, this was the prophecy where he was actually given the vision of the 70 weeks. It was actually given to him in the 68th year. Uh, so he had to wait two years before the trigger actually happened. Anyway, so when the trigger happened, um, that was uh, Cyrus's proclamation, uh, go and build. And um, yeah, so there's, if you want to, I know there's a lot of detail on the screen at the moment, but uh, I'll just make it a bit bigger for those who want to go read through the notes. Um, okay, so there's a few other things that also confirm that, that the 70 years uh, coincides with uh, with Cyrus's first year in Daniel 121 we see that Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus okay and then later in 2 Chronicles 36 verses 20 to 21 and then that had escaped from the sword carried away uh, uh, carried he away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia and in and to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah unto the, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths for as, as long as she lay desolate. She kept Sabbath uh, to fulfill uh, three score and ten years. So to fulfill 70 years. So we know that the 70 years was is linked to uh, Cyrus's first year. So we know we've now got a uh, we know exactly when the trigger happened in the 70th year and so now we, all we've got to do is count 483 years to the one event and actually you know what I think I'm just go into I'm going to go into some detail anyway this was uh, this is the chronology that we're going to that, that gives us the detail and I, I'm going to uh, I think it's important that we actually get into the actual um, text of Daniel's uh, 70 week prophecy because this this video is also um, is uh, for a group of, of uh, for a home cell group that I'm currently uh, going through some some teaching on end times and we we're busy discussing uh, at the moment uh, this this whole 70 weeks of Daniel the whole prophecy of Daniel's 70 weeks uh, so this is for them as well, uh, to help them uh, get a grip, grips on, on the truth of the scriptures. So I'm actually, I'm, go, I'm going to use uh, the notes that I prepared for that uh, class, because um, that will also help uh, this video along as well. Um, so I've actually, I've got it open here. So this is a home cell teaching for, okay, this first bit was just to recap on previous stuff that we taught in terms of the... Um, the uh, who the gospels are speaking to and um yeah so this is so uh, this is from the section so we, we we're getting into this is the daniel 70 weeks uh, so 70 weeks of years which is 490 years and we're looking at in terms of the wars my next video i'm going to look at the, the same prophecy in terms of the is and how it applies to the 70 years for israel in our time so this prophecy was applicable to Daniel's people and the coming of the Lord the first time. But the same prophecy is, is true for Daniel's people and the coming of the Lord in, at the second event and for the end times understanding. So this video is looking at the was and a an, correct understanding of the interpretation to the first coming of the Lord. Our next video, which is going to be part two, will be... A, looking at the same prophecy but in terms of the is or in terms of the current where how to read uh, the, the the prophecy in terms of 70 years because the, the word the, the, the in daniel 9 24 where it all starts the prophecy itself i mean there was a lead up of prayer and uh, and and a communication between daniel and the angel that delivered it beforehand but this is the crux of the the actual prophecy and, and it really started off that 70 weeks. So now this word weeks is in Hebrew is Shabuah, uh, which uh, specifically means um, a, a seven or a period of seven years or seven days or seven weeks. Uh, but it's a period of seven. It's a set of seven. Okay. Uh, so it can be days, years, days, weeks or years. 
okay? Um, and it's, it's not, you, now this is where, we, what we need to understand is that a Shubua is a set that can't be broken up. You cannot decide to just cut off a seven and, and, and postpone a part of it later. It's like a week, a, a week where it's six days of work and seventh day rest. You can't just decide, oh, well, I'm going to shift the seven day rest by a few days and then I'll have my seven day rest. No, you've got to have six days of work and the seventh day rest must follow immediately. Or in the case of agriculture, you, where you've got six years of farming and then the seventh year must be rest, they had no liberty to decide to, to that set of seven just to cut off that seven and say, okay, well, we'll, we'll observe this seven uh, 2,000 years later. Okay? You cannot break up the, a Shabuah. It's a set. Okay? And so this is where, this is the most fundamental thing that we need to understand as to why the church has got it wrong in shaving off that 70th week and postponing it by 2000. You cannot do that because it's part of a set. It's a part of the set of 70. There's 70 of these sets. And they want to take the last set and just palm it off to, to 2000 years later. No. It was complete, 70 complete sets and they were all linked to one another. Okay, so and it's not just any seven years. It specifically must start at the beginning of the Shemitah cycle. The Shemitah cycle is six years of, of agriculture and seventh year rest. And then six year and each one of those is a cycle. So it's six and one, six and one, six and one is a set. Okay, so and you, you can't you can't break them up. So seventy weeks or seventy Shabua uh, are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. Two things there. Now, credit to picking this up must go to Alan. I never saw it before, and then he helped me un see that this is for two events, two separate sets. There's a 70 weeks for thy people, and there's a 70 weeks for the Holy City, and I'm going to show you that in, 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 the, in, in the interpretation you know, as we go along. So those are, those are important things. And then, of course, these were the things that would be uh, accomplished uh, by the end of that period of time. Um, or at least partly accomplished, if not fully. I, I believe that, that because this prophecy was for two specific time periods, for his first coming and his second coming, that these six six things which will, would be accomplished are actually two groups of three, where the first three are accomplished and the second three are yet to be accomplished. Okay, I don't want to get into that because that's that's now... I just want to get the the foundation of and understand you know interpreting when how how this where this uh, this 490 years fits in and how how it's made up. Okay, so it's 70 Shabuah, uh, which can also be 70 years. Okay, so Shabuah is a uh, it's like fe um, you'll see in the definition a, a feast of weeks is also called a, a Shabuah. Okay, so there's there's one of these every single year. Uh, there's a feast of weeks every year, so this can also be interpreted as 70 feast of weeks. So it can be interpreted as 70 years as well. That's for, that's for part two. So, but for now we're, we're looking at it as 70 uh, sets of years. So 490 years. Okay. Then in the next verse he breaks down and he says, "Know therefore and understand." And this is where again where the talents come in. There's a very few that actually want to know and understand and actually obtain another talent. And this is what I want to help you guys to do tonight, is get another talent in terms of understanding this prophecy correctly. So know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, which is the trigger. Okay, so from the trigger unto Messiah, unto, unto, the, unto the Messiah the Prince shall be, and then he gives a breakdown, seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Okay, so it's seven weeks, which is seven times seven years, it's 49 years, and th uh, three score, which is Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew word for three score, or, or, or the Hebrew word here uh, that was interpreted as three score actually means multiple six. Okay, I didn't give the, I don't think I've got the definition in here, in the text here, but you can go check it up, it's multiple six. Just like 40 is multiple 4 and 80 is multiple 8. This is multiple 6. And the multiple always seems to be 10 in, in throughout Scripture. Although there's one instance where I believe it will be a different number. So multiple 6 and 2 weeks. So that's so it's, so it's 60 and 2 
weeks. So 60 and 2 sets of 7. So 62 times 7, that's 434 years. So it's broken up into 49 years and 434 years, which totals 483, 483 years for but it still doesn't come to so there's a, there's 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 still one uh, set of seven that's not included in this breakdown and then but with but by within this breakdown he says from the trigger uh unto messiah it'll be this period of time 483 years and during that time the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time now i'm going to uh, show you how that that very clearly um was 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 put there for a reason that that that, that, that during troublous times there will be a rebuilding of of the streets and the wall again okay then the last seven is given in the next verse daniel 9 26 it said after three score and two weeks or after six sixty and two weeks which is 483 years together with the seven obviously it's if it's after these two and it's off then it must be after the seven weeks as well so in other words it's the full 480. So after that period, um, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people, of, and then goes on to say, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city. This is now the part that's applicable to the city. Remember, this is this is a this is a, a prophecy both for the people and the city. Now it's getting into that that the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. And this happened in 70 AD, which was 43 years from the end of the 49 year. And that's important to note. I'm going to get into some detail on that. Um, so this note is, 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 is probably a bit here, but I'll read it. it, it it's, uh, this happened 70 AD, which is 340 years from the end of the 40, 490 year for the people. And exactly 490 years from when the street and the temple was complete which was 34 years from the trigger. And I'll show you that in the biblical chronology. I'm going to show you that timing. Okay. And at the end of, and then the scripture goes on to say, okay, that's this part in brackets is what I added. And then it continues and it says, at the end of, at the end thereof shall be a flood and unto the end uh, of the war, ablation, uh, uh, de desolations are determined. So more than one desolation. Okay. And now this, so so far we've all, all we've dealt with is the um, is the first th 69 weeks uh, up up until now. Now Daniel 9:27 gets into what happens in the 70th week. Okay, and he shall confirm a covenant with many, not all, for one week. Okay, this word for one week actually can mean. Um, the word for can actually mean f f or a certain week okay um, you can actually go and see the same word was used in Daniel 10 uh, 5 and 12 other places where it was also translated uh, for a certain not necessarily one week so it's, it's not just not it says one week but it actually should be it could also be interpreted a certain uh, uh, for uh, with many for a certain week okay you can go look there i'm not going to go there now you go check daniel 10 5 out and and just search for the word the hebrew word that's associated with that um and in the midst of the week so in the middle of it uh, in the middle of the seven years he shall cause a sacrifice and an ablation to cease and for the overspreading of ab abomination he shall make it desolate and even until the consummation um, or the full end um, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate so again we're speaking for the overspreading of abomination you make a desolate is that's talking about the, the 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 city part of it so you see, the first part is about ending sacrifice and oblation for the people and then because of abominations and overspreading well for the overspreading of abomination you, you'll make it desolate what desolate that is city Okay, so there's always two parts in this whole thing that you need to understand. It's speaking to two things. Um, and it's also for many, not for all. And you can go and check that the covenant that Jesus made. Now this, this I just need to cover. There's, I think, probably most people, or most of the church, teaching that this covenant made with many is, is the Antichrist, making the covenant with many for seven years. What a lot of nonsense. 
where does it say that i mean all along this entire passage is about the coming of the messiah and 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 the people and the holy city uh, and just because they, they, there's one place where it says the prince or the people of the prince shall destroy the city, the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city, they say, oh, well, they are the he, all of a sudden, here, yeah, the he, here yeah, is the Antichrist, the people of the, the prince that was referred to there who destroyed the city. And it wasn't even the Antichrist that destroyed the city. It was, you know, or it was the people of the prince that destroyed the city. So why would the, you know, it just doesn't make sense. There's bits adding uh, missing here. Uh, and just just to just to clarify, the people of the prince here wasn't Roman uh, weren't Roman soldiers. They were Arab soldiers working on uh, 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 that were grafted in to the military arm. So it's very interesting that the that the Arab people were actually involved in the destruction of the of the temple the first time around, and they will again be involved at the end times. Just a side note on that. If you go and have a check the detail on the history, you'll see that it wasn't actually the Roman soldiers. They were they were Arabs. Um, grafted in to the Roman army. Okay, so the he here is clearly the Messiah will be confirm a covenant with many for uh, for a certain week or for one week. Okay, and 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 this this seventh week must follow on immediately after the first sixty nine. There's no evidence here. We see nothing, zero, nothing of any hint of a two thousand year gap between them. And to add to injury, it's it's a positive, it's a shabuah. You you cannot just move, sh uh, put, uh, pull them apart, pull the, the the years apart. It's it's a set. Okay, that's the next section. So we, so that's getting into the text of, of, of the matter. Um, so now I'm I'm going to just go and show you the detail of this in the chronology. So we we we'll just go back to the beginning again. We said so. It started off in the seventieth year. That was the trigger. So that Cyrus is the trigger when Cyrus was first uh, was king, Saul king, in the year the correct year, four fifty four B.C. Ptolemy date, which is the incorrect date. 536 that's so those that all get hung up about uh, Cyrus can't be used because he was king in far in the year 536 BC um, go and get yourself into the biblical chronology get out of the Ptolemic um, pagan chronology and you will solve your problem so we can count from there now um, the 49 now it, remember it was broken up into seven and then 60 and two so the seven is, is time saying it's 49 years it's interesting to note that at the 49th year okay is when chronology records in the biblical records of you know, all the chronological chronological statements that were used to put the puzzle together that were used to put the 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 biblical chronology together uh, ends in the year in in this year uh, which was four, 49 years into the count of that 490 years this was the year when nehemiah returns to jerusalem um, and uh, that was after a sequence se sequence of events um, so that 49 was marked within daniel's prophecy i can't find any other reason why why the lord would have broken up broken it up into seven and then 60 and two the seven i believe was to mark this date which was the end okay we also during this time and we're going to come into we're going to see some detail on 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 a few other things and while we're here i just want to point out to you that from from the beginning of the count after the from the trigger the decree to rebuild um, we see that in the 21st year that was when the house was finished the house of the lord the temple was finished 21 years into the 490 years okay according to the bible and then at the year and 35 years in to the in the 35th year into the uh, 490 years is when this set of events this is when the walls so 
at this point, Nehemiah, uh, he he went. Uh, 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 the it was reported to him that the the Jerusalem walls were broken and the gates had burnt had been burnt, and he gets permission from our. Uh, 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 Artaxerius to to go and and build the walls and 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 remake the gates. Okay, and uh, Nehemiah he was appointed as governor for twelve years. So from from this point in time, from the thirty fifth year into the chronology for 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 twelve years, he was he was governor uh, in Jerusalem, and the walls were finished in the twentieth year of Artaxerius. Uh, in the 25th day of the sixth month in his 20th year and they did it in 52 days so that means that they started uh, repairing the walls and the gates uh, on the third day of the fifth month in the in the 20th year of our tax series so the 20th years yes the there's the count for uh, Darius Darius is a this by the way Darius is a title um, so this Darius yeah is the same as uh, as the Arctic series. The um, that's uh, so this is his when he came and in his twentieth year of reign, okay, is when these events actually happened. And the one other very very so now that so these in that year, the the walls and the gates, the breaches in the walls and the gates were were repaired in a record time, and then Nehemiah and and uh, Ezra and the the leadership and the people entered into a covenant they entered into a covenant they made a covenant and that you can go read and it's it's, it's a lengthy covenant you can go read all about it in uh, nehemiah chapters uh, chapter 9 uh, but i think it actually starts it, it goes into 10 as well it's quite quite a long detail but the covenant is mentioned yeah the covenant was made um and it uh, and then it, a couple of other things the lists of the priests uh, were completed and and um, and there's a whole lot of events that happened here so the, essentially the this was the point in time when everything concerning the temple and the city was really uh, set and done and 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 the covenant was made i believe that this is the point in time when god uh, considered um the the jerusalem as a city to to have been restored okay just a few th interesting things to go back and have a look at while we're here as well i don't want to confuse but it's very important we got 70 years there are several sets of 70 years okay we had the 70 years um, of captivity when daniel shadrach Meshach, and benigo were taken and that started at in 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 the um in jeremiah's uh, i think the peg was actually uh, Jehoiakim's third year, in the third year of Jehoiakim, okay, the kings and all that, we know exactly when his third year was, so we can peg this date, and and there's a count of 70 years, okay, and we've looked at that, but there's another count of 70 years, uh, when Ezekiel, later on, uh, Jehoiakim and, uh, and Ezekiel, uh, they went into captivity uh, in the ninth year, uh, so it's eight years after Daniel uh, went into captivity, another group went into captivity, and there's a there's a seventy year count for them as well. And then again, you'll see here uh, after eight years again. <laughs> so we have this repeat pattern after you know yeah, so we in the ninth year and then yeah in the ninth year of these guys. Then um, this is marked as the beginning of the 70 years of indignation that Ezekiel mentions later on in scripture so that was a reverse counter there's no scripture here but it's it's further down and it, you count backwards to to find the the start date uh, then we have the beginning of the 70 years of the the besiege the besiege took place um i think it's uh, what was the note on the 10th of the 10th of the 9th of Zedekiah, so it's ni uh, Zedekiah's 9th year. Zedekiah's 9th year is the one flag and was besieged. And then in Ezekiel 9, on the 12th of the 10th, uh, no, that was a different prophecy, sorry. But the peg year for this is the 9th year of Zedekiah. The 9th year of Zedekiah is when the 
when the besiege started. So we can start that count. And then a few years later, so in the third year from of that or the twelfth year of um, Ezekiel's twelfth year of captivity, uh, which was Nebuchadnezz Nebuchadnezzar's nineteenth year, I think that's what the Bible uses as a as a peg. In his nineteenth year, he uh, is the beginning of of the seventy years of the desolation of the temple. So the temple was destroyed in Nebuchadnezzar's nineteenth year, which was in uh, this is Zedekiah's eleventh year, and um, let me just see the. Um, Uh, 11th year of Zedekiah and there was another date that also confirmed it um, on the 12th year of yeah uh, it, it said on the in the 12th year of Jehoiakim's captivity so there's three three dates <laughs> the 11th of uh, of of um, uh, Zedekiah the 19th of um of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the 12th year of Jehoiakim's captivity just so that you make sure that you can't get it wrong as to uh, exactly when the temple was destroyed and then that starts another 70 count so if we go down to the bottom of these 70 counts we see that um, the one that was in that's particularly interesting is okay this is now 70 years these 70 years referred to in Zechariah chapter 1 uh, was in these 70 years that was the uh, the, the in 70 years of dignation okay so uh it, i think it reads how long will you not have mercy uh on jerusalem and judah against which thou hast had indignation these 70 years so there's 70 years and it goes back um so that was the trigger for that but more interesting um uh, is this one here okay uh, I'm going to do this one first. Yeah, we see that in this year, the sixth year of Darius, um, the house was finished. So in the sixth year of Darius, so we see have this. There's the sixth year, Darius sixth year, the house was finished, which was the twenty-first year of the four hundred ninety years. So we got that, and you see it's after that. So seventy years were accomplished. The 70 years were accomplished in the desolations. This was the first of the des two desolations. Yes, yeah, so this one is going to be accomplished. And it was so it was just after the accomplishment of the 70 years that it flagged as the house was finished. Interesting. And that this is all, this is not pieced together f for this, um, to try and make it fit. This is just pulling out the scriptures and doing the counts and putting it in. In a, uh, in a graphical format like this and you can see how the things come together I didn't do this one this one was the the siege the end of the set the count of the siege of the city was there and there's a there's a mention yeah in terms of in again in Zechariah 7 it talks about uh, you know they you know they asked the question should we fast and mourn in the seventh fifth month and then um, and then it goes on to say that uh, when you mourned etc in the fifth and seventh month those 70 years um, so this this statement was made um, in this particular year um, in the fourth year of Darius okay that was in the fourth year of Darius Darius this is fourth year that's when the statement was made that's when the count ended so it says those 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 70 years okay so just some interesting um, terminology connected to the actual counts of 70 okay it's a little bit of a diversion but it's nevertheless interesting from we, we can see that the lord is well, I, th I think the point i'm trying to make is the lord is very accurate um, in the the scriptures are very very accurate indeed okay so we had the 490 year count and uh, that was the end of uh, biblical uh, chron chronological records now what Daniel's what Daniel's prophecy did for us was it provided a, a bridge 
uh, through to the uh, to the Messiah. So we knew we can know exactly when uh, Jesus was baptized, and this is what I'm going to show you now. So we you remember Daniel said it was seven and sixty and two. So we've done the seven now. We're going to do the sixty and two. Sixty and two is four hundred and thirty-four years. So we can count from here four hundred and thirty-four years. Um, and if you carry on, this is the count in this column here, uh, and you can see. Uh, 434 okay which obviously is if you add the other 49 to it as well which is the 483rd year so those are this is just excluding the 49 years this is including the 49 years and we see that this is when up to unto Messiah and this is now where Martin I believe got it wrong he took this date he picked this date as the crucifixion that this would be the crucifixion, which is pegged to the date 29 AD. Okay, so these counts, this would line up to the year 29 AD. I believe that Martin might have been influenced by this incorrect uh, interpretation of Daniel's uh, 70 weeks by shifting that last week out by 2,000 years. I think he was influenced for that, and that's why he pegged the crucifixion on this particular date. But that, that's, that's incorrect. You cannot shift that. So if you if you if you keep the 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 the, the seven the the last set of seven years attached to the uh, to the end of the of the, the 483. So you, these are the last seven years here, and you go with the scripture in the middle of that week. In the middle of that seven, is when the Messiah is cut off and not for himself. Puts us that he exactly where where it actually happened. So from his baptism to where he was actually cut off. We know that Jesus was cut off in the year 33 AD. So in the spring, in the spring of 33 AD is when he was cut off. This he was baptized just before the fall. You know, it's three and a half years. Eh? So just before that's one, one, two, three and a half years to bring us from about the fall of 29 to the spring of 33, it's three and a half years. Uh, it's, it's just a little it's a little less than three and a half years but um this is so we know for certain in the f around about or just before the fall of the baptism uh fall of of 2090 is when jesus was baptized now we know that jesus was born not in december 25th no 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 jesus was born from a scriptural perspective and I'm, this video is not going to go into detail on that there are other videos that um, that I go into tremendous detail on that. I think I've done. No, it's not a video. I've done a teaching on on that. It's a document. I haven't got it open now. But I, it's called "Unto Us a Child Is Born," which goes into into the detail of of how the scriptures prove or, uh, that Jesus was born in the middle of the third month of the year. So he was born just after in this early summer. Uh, in the middle of the third month, 15th day or the 16th day of the third month is when Jesus was born, and that's when he would say so he would have turned 30. Um, so we can just go to scriptures, uh, Luke, um, Luke 3. Um, and um, yeah, so. In Luke 3.23, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, uh, being supposed to be the son of Joseph. So then it, then it goes on to his uh, genealogy. So he was baptized here. Now now when when the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized from praying and praying the heavens was open and the Holy Ghost descended on him bodily, uh, in, a, in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. And that was when he began to be 30 years of age. So we know that in the f uh, he was he's baptized, he, he, just, he had just turned 30. Uh, so this was somewhere between the middle of the third month and, and, and the autumn um, feasts. Um, so, and then also from this, in in Luke, uh, in, in just in, in a date is st this whole event of John baptizing, beginning to baptize, and Jesus being baptized is date stamped as the fifteenth year 
of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. So the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar is now where we are compelled uh, from scripture to go and dig into the history. Um, and there you can go and search a number of places and dig up in the history. I'm just going to go and look at the the commentary, um, there's a commentary on this and they give us an interesting uh, summary of the historical uh, facts of this. So if we look at the commentary for Luke 3, 1, it says uh, the 15th year, this was the 15th of his uh, principality and 13th of his uh, monarchy. Uh, for he was two years joint emperor previously with the, uh, previously to the death of Augustus. So him and Augustus were co-rulers for the first two years, and then he was a uh, 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 sole ruler from a uh, sole emperor from the thirteenth year onwards. So the f the fifteenth so the fifteenth year includes his his two years of of co co uh, uh, ruling. Uh, it goes on to say Tiberius Caesar, this emperor succeeded Augustus, uh, in whose reign. Uh, uh, Christ was born. So Christ was born in the reign of Augustus okay, and he began to reign, now this is refer referring to Ti Ti Tiberius Caesar, he, Ti Tiberius began to reign August 19, uh, 1480. So uh, this is, if, he's, if he began in 1480, then his 15th year must have been 2980. So his 15th year was up to August, so from August 2980 onwards would have been his 16th year. So we know we we know that if if the Bible said that it was his 15th year, it was very clear. This is this is now this is around this is around about the time of um, just before the the autumn feasts, and it's after the third year. So it's a very tight window. We know that Jesus was baptized very close to his birthday, uh, and um, just before the 19th of, of August in 29 AD. 14 plus the 15th to the, to the 15th year of Tiberius' reign would be 29 AD. Okay, so we've now got two witnesses uh, confirming we've got a, 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 the, the 29 AD. In my book, two witnesses is enough. Actually, according to the scripture, two witnesses is enough. Um, so 29 AD is when Jesus was baptized. 33 AD is when he was crucified. Bo all based on scriptural. Scriptural based chronology proved it and the uh, record uh, in, in the scriptures ref uh, referred to a, no a, a date that we've got uh, recorded in our history. So both of them are pointing to 29 AD. So this was um, this is a very important year, and so that, I think that that pretty much covers it from this chronology. What we also need to understand is what Jesus did. Yeah, just shortly after his baptism, we know he went onto his uh, forty-day testing in the wilderness. So he was tested by Satan in the wilderness, according to the, to, to Luke. Uh, just go to the Bible, according to Luke four. Uh, and he, so he went um, into the wilderness and after he came out of the wilderness of 40 to, for 40 days he went to uh, preach he went came to Nazareth uh, where he had been brought up and and he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up um, to to read and there was delivered to him the book of Isaiah um, and when he had opened up the book, he found the place where it is written, and he reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That was true. That did happen. He had been baptized, and the Spirit was upon him, because he hath anointed me as Messiah to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me as Messiah to heal the brokenhearted, and as Messiah to preach deliverance to the captives, and as Messiah uh, and for the recovery of sight to the blind, and to set as Messiah to set the, uh, at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book. And then he said later, and he began to say to them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. The word is actually hearing or in your ears, but in your hearing, this 
I'm other raft. Other raft and not only other raft, I'm telling you that this is the acceptable year of the Lord, which is the Jubilee. He declared the Jubilee in the autumn of 29 AD. It's the only place in the entire Bible where we have a record of which year was the Jubilee. There is no other record anywhere else in the Bible that I have found, maybe somebody can find I certainly haven't found it, certainly modern Anstey didn't find it, that pegs where we are, where the Jubilee cycle was, where the Jubilee year was. Because now we've got a scriptural date and we can work forwards and backwards in terms of that, uh, that Jubilee. So working backwards, we can see a couple of things. And I think at this point, um, I think I'm just actually now get into into the chart. Um, so in terms of the the jubilee year, <coughs> I just need to add an extra bit of information. So that because I'm, I have no doubt that some are going to say, yeah, but a jubilee is you know is 50 years. It's not. It is in the 50th year after the 49th year but it's also the first year of the next jubilee cycle so the 50th year and the first year coincide so at the end of 49 is the 50th is a jubilee but it's the first year so we see that in 30 AD would have been the jubilee year which would have been the 50th and it would have been the first year of Jesus' ministry and the first year of the of this final week. So just to make uh, certain that we don't have any misunderstanding with regards to when, and, and this is why I say that Daniel's 70 weeks are part of a jubilee cycle, it's part of a Shemitah, a, ju a jubilee cycle is part of the Shemitah cycle, there's seven, seven sets, uh, seven Shemitah cycles uh, in a jubilee, so it's seven sets of seven, uh, to give you the 49 years and it's not just any seven years it's not just any 49 years very specifically uh, starts in the first year of the six years of agriculture with the seventh year of rest and going into the next set of six years of agriculture and seventh year just like a week um, they, f they, they follow on to one another and so you can't just you you uh, <clears throat> the count doesn't just start at a random place the 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 f the the 400 and 90 years or the first year of the 490 years would have been the first year of uh, a week now not necessarily in this case the 49 didn't start at a jubilee it started a week into a jubilee because it actually because it ended uh, sorry because the jubilee came in bef a week before the end of the 49 means it must have started um a week into a, a, a jubilee. Uh, let me just go into to the chronology to explain that. I can show you that in detail. Um, uh, so when we go to the the the, the count, um, okay. Yes. So we see yes year one. Okay. Yes, the jubilee count. Okay. We see that there was a jubilee. There's 49. There's a jubilee year, the first year, and there was a. So there's a week. Uh, this is the last week uh, of the the captivity, and in the eighth year of the jubilee, which would have been also the first year of the next cycle. Okay, so there's a cycle of seven years. Well, let's just go a bit further back. Let's go to just so that you understand the jubilee cycle uh, okay so there's mm, there's this, oh, this right there's the end of this so there's one set of seven years there's a set of seven uh, it's not so easy on this chart uh, then another set of seven then another set of seven then another set of seven and then another set of seven and so it goes on to make seven of these until you get so seven and another set of seven to get to your 49th and then the jubilee is in the in the first year of the next cycle and it's also a first year of an, the seven another seven 
So you can see that the, the, the start of the 400 odd years started in uh, year one of, of a cycle, uh, but it was in it, it was a week into this there was a first the first week was already complete so it was a week into a jubilee cycle and that is why it ends a week before let's go to the bottom of it let's go into the bottom of the uh, 490 you see there there's the end of it but the jubilee was there so there was a week after the jubilee just like so because it started a week into the jubilee it must finish a week into a jubilee that's why the jubilee is there at the 483rd year not at the 490 so even though 490 is a perf is, is a perfectly divisible by 10 uh, gives you a jubilee count of 49 years the actual count didn't start on a jubilee and end on a jubilee the jubilee was a year before the end of the the count okay it's just a just a side note something worth uh, worth, worth noting because now we now that we've covered a bit of background um i'm just going to go full screen on that mm. okay all right so what we've got is a timeline here and i'm just going to give you a full breakdown of this chart um step by step it's we're basically going to repeat what we've already seen in in the scriptures okay all starts in the 70 year of of uh, of of exile in babylon daniel daniel 70 uh, years in exile okay specifically he receives the the the, the 70 week prophecy in the 68th year uh, according to scripture and the trigger uh, which was to the to de uh, the decree to rebuild Jerusalem um, a, as previously uh, predicted or previously prophesied uh, by Jeremiah sorry in Isaiah 44 28 that it would be a Cyrus that Cyrus his shepherd the Cyrus uh, the Lord shepherd the Cyrus uh, the anointed would uh, would uh, issue that decree and he did so in his first year that he was sole king so now we've got the start of the 70 week count which is 490 years and then daniel gave it broken down into seven weeks which is 49 years and 60 weeks which is 434 years and two weeks which is another 14 years and when you add all of that up it comes to it's 69 weeks or 483 years from the trigger unto messiah which was his baptism not his crucifixion in 29 AD, which we've proven from scripture is exactly the year that it happened we've also now shown that the, the if that was the fall of 29 AD, when the lord declared now we remember jubilees run from the 10th of the seventh month through until the 10th of the seventh month i believe that also even the shmita the the cycles the agricultural cycle the shmita years some say the first of the seventh month i believe it's also the tenth of the seventh month it doesn't actually say in the bible but i believe we, the jubilee is definitely the trumpet is to be blown on its tenth of the seventh month to declare the jubilee jesus declared the jubilee in the fall of 29 which means that the actual that the that flows over into 30 a.d 30 a.d was the year of the jubilee you know, 29 was would have been around about i don't know uh, the fall would have been september october somewhere around there and then it flows over into the following year of, of the fall of 30. So the, from the fall of 29 to the fall of 30 was the Jubilee year. Okay, so we now know exactly where the Jubilee year is and that's where it was. Okay, and then, in, then there was one week remaining, one week of, of seven years. And in the midst of that, in the year 33 AD is when Jesus was crucified. Now we're looking at this in terms of the wars, and the wars is every, the time period, everything before Jesus' crucifixion, this, everything from Adam up to this point is the wars, and from this point is the is. Because the Lord is, 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 the word is written in terms of was, is, and is to come. In Revelations, I think it's about three or four times, he says, uh, it refers to the, Jesus as the was, is, and is to come. We need to understand that the word is written in three layers. It's written in terms of a context of was. It's written in terms of a context of is. 
uh, which is for now. And in other words, the was is history. The is is how it's, the word is applicable to us right now. And the is to come is 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 the the final uh, uh, tribulation years and the end times, uh, which we which we need to understand. So the is flows into the is to come. The is to come begins at the at the first taking of the the first group that leaves. Okay. Um, this video is, is about these. Uh, the next video on looking at Daniel's prophecy in terms of the the is going, flowing into the is to come. We will see the detail that Daniel actually tells us in, in a fair amount of detail of what's going to happen in the end times and how long it's going to be. Okay. But th at the moment we're looking for it in looking at it in terms of the wars which is this 490 years as opposed to the 70 years. Remember, Shabua can be read as 490 years or it can be read as 70 years. Okay, so we've got the total time period which takes us to 36 AD. Okay, so that's the total time from when Cyrus decreed it, 490 years, takes us to 36 AD. And that's when, the, when Stephen was stoned as well. And that brings us to the end of that, that, um, those, those events. And then we've got this strange period um, of of time of 34 years uh, uh, to bring us to 70 AD when the Jerusalem was then destroyed. The second temple. And the, it's been a mystery as to why why 70, you know, and and if we now if we've proven that you know that Jesus was crucified in 33 AD well, then it's 30, you know, then we, got, we haven't got 40 years. Uh, so some people have looked at the 40 years, have tried to fit 40 years in there. That, But what we need to remember is that Daniel's uh, uh, prophecy was written for two groups. It was written for thy people, and it was written for the holy city. And when, so now if we, are, if, we, if we see that we know for a fact that it was destroyed in 70 AD, if we count back the, the 490 years, we find it brings us to the um, to the 34th year, actually the 35th year, because there's no year zero. Okay, so if you count from, even though it's 34 years, this side of of the of the dividing line between BC and AD, um, because there's no year zero, it actually takes us not to the 34th year, but to the 35th year, and you'll remember. In the chronology I showed you that in the 35th year is when they made the covenant. In the 35th year from the um, uh, from the beginning of the 490 years, okay, they made a covenant. And if you count from this 70 backwards, 490 years, it takes you to the, exactly the same year. And that, that was the, that was the. So in other words, I believe that having now completed not only the temple but the uh, they fixed the breaches in the walls and the gates and they've now entered into a covenant uh, they've now reached the point where I believe in God's eyes he, he saw Jerusalem as having been fully restored and he starts the count again of 490 years at the end of 490 years boom Jerusalem is destroyed again and the temple is destroyed again okay so you I remember in I also mentioned that 21 years into is when the temple was was the second temple was completed, and then of course we got uh, Cyrus's first year, and I also mentioned to you in there that we had the biblical record was in the 49 years into this into the this, into this uh, the 70 weeks cycle is when the biblical record ended when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem. So those events all, and then another interesting fact. Sorry, it's blocked out here a little bit. This should read 34. Um, it's actually just fixed that this uh, this little thing is blocking out the four there, but we can see that Jesus' lifespan from when he was born. Oh, by the way, if, if, if we if uh, we we don't need to debate what year Jesus was born anymore. <laughs> we can just simply calculate it. So if you count 39 from 29 A.D. when he was 30, okay. And you count backwards 30 years, well, you, you'll find that Jesus was born in 2 BC. Not 4 BC or any other date. He was born in 2 BC. Biblical chronology, fact. Undisputable. Okay. And in fact, there's a second witness in the sun, moon, and stars uh, for that, but I'm not going to get into that now. So when you count from, his, from when he was born to his actual, to his crucifixion, um, we come to, I think, it's two, uh, well, I've worked it out to be two months short of 34 years. 
from when he was born to when he was crucified. Two months short of 34 years. And then you've got this 34 year gap between 36 AD when uh, the, the first count of the count for the people comes to an end. 34 years later, the count for the city comes to an end and it's destroyed. Okay, so I think that's that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to do, um, share with you guys in terms of the true and correct understanding of Daniel's 70 weeks for in terms of the 490 years or the wars interpretation. Now, Daniel's prophecy also does give us an end time understanding, but it's not as the church describes it as breaking away the, the 70th week of Daniel and moving it 2,000 years out into the future. That is not the correct way that Daniel uh, shows us the detail of what's coming in terms of the, the end times. So yes, he was given an end time understanding within the same prophecy. And that will be my next video. I will do it in a similar way with a similar chart. And I will show you from the same text, the same, same prophecy, how we can interpret the 70 years that were, that were allocated to the people and to the city for the end times. And I hope that uh, that helps you to, and, and I hope it's a blessing and I hope you'll be able to count it. You'll be able to count it as another a talent uh, that we've acquired and that it will withstand the test of the fire.